What's going on my reefing fam? March here, Fragbox TV. Today I want to do a video on these right here. Beautiful, are they not? Very, very nice. This is what we call a Yuma. Y-U-M-A. Yuma, Yuma, Yuma. It's a soft coral. It is relatively easy to keep. I'm going to talk to you about how to keep it. Um, differences between this and the Recordia Florida, which is a little bit, I guess, more common than these ones. These are the Recordia Yuma. So first off, they get huge. They get a lot, a lot bigger. Actually, maybe I should go get a Recordia Florida and put it next to this one so I can do uh, maybe a better comparison. Let's see if we have. If you don't already know, this is a store here in the Toronto area that specializes in saltwater aquarium. Subscribe, we try to do a video here every day of the week. And let's see if we have some Recordia. There's one, I found it. And this is a Recordia Florida. This is over here a Rhodactus mushroom, which is quite nice. So these are both mushroom corals. And I'm gonna take you, come with me, my little friend. And we're gonna go, I'm gonna make you the star of our video today. I'm gonna take you over here to be friends with our little buddy. Okay, so this will give you a better idea. I think the difference between a Yuma, oh, son of a gun, a Yuma over here on the right, the large, um, I think we call them Black Widow is the trade name. I just call them Yumas. As you know, I'm trying to move away from the fancy names and back towards Latin names. So the biggest difference is kind of the bubbles. I, I see Recordias as being more bubbly. I know that that isn't a scientific term, but the patterns as well, the way that the, the tentacles radiate out from the mouth. So these ones are more kind of circular and stay a little bit bunched up. And these ones radiate, um, it's just a different pattern. There's more, I see more lines to them. Yumas get a lot bigger. So we're never gonna see a Florida Recordia get as big as a Yuma. These things can get, they're about, that would be about full grown right there. It's maybe two and a half inches across. This is about as big as a Recordia is gonna get until it starts to split. So I guess we could talk about growth as well. Uh, these split by, it's kind of like fission. What they do, I think you can kind of see it here. So you see the mouths? They're almost a different, always a different color. So the mouths, what they do is they pinch together and then they pull apart and they, right, right, right there where you see that line is forming, where that gray is, those are actually gonna split into two. What I find with the Yumas is they drop babies. Like you see that right there, it looks kind of cool. It's um, like a translucent sort of color. That's a baby and so is right, right, right there. You can see those little green ones starting to form. Those are gonna turn into larger ones one day. Oh, there's a good example here on the side, right there. You see that, what they do? They kind of walk and then what they'll do is drop these little, little babies, just like this. There's one, there's another one, there's one there, um, there's another one there. And so these ones, they grow pretty good. This piece actually was traded to us from a customer. It was grown out and brought back in. Yumas in general though, are not as easy to keep and not as e easy to grow as Florida Recordias, with the exception of this one variety here, this one, the Black Widow, we do see a lot of customers actually trading them back in. We are able to grow them here in the store, and we grow them under very low light. So I think that's one of the keys to not only the Florida Recordia, but the, the, the Recordia Yuma is low, low, low light. I'm talking, you could do par of 50 under, or, or less, and they're still gonna be happy. They're gonna be swollen, they're gonna look good, and very low light, low light coral, even sort of in the cave, not as low as maybe some Rhodactus, is a little bounce mushroom over here. But my friend used to actually dive and collect the Florida Recordia from Puerto Rico. You can't export from there anymore. This is many, many years ago. But when he used to dive, he told me that a lot of times looking for these Recordia, what he would do is actually take a rock and flip it over. And you'd find some of the most beautiful ones on the underside in like getting absolute, like almost no light at all. And what I find with the Yumas, the key to success with these is indirect light. So you never wanna give them direct, direct light, um, very low light or even indirect light, sometimes off even kind of like into a cave. So low light for sure. And I find they do better in dirtier water. So don't go and dirty up your water. Our water here in the store is very clean. So in our coral beds, the nitrates are quite low. They're like between one and two. The phosphates usually hover around 0 0.03. It's a very, very clean system. We go through a ton of water. In these conditions, it's they're still happy, they still grow, but to get them to really, really grow, I, or I find they thrive under their dirtier water conditions. They're kind of like a dirty, dirty animal. Same with these guys here, that's gonna go for both of them. The care is more or less the same for both. They like to eat, they got these mouths here, as you can see right in the middle, that green kind of mouth. 
And Yumas come in the craziest colors. So these are very bright. I love Florida Recordias. I think I've seen just about every single color out there. I'm still finding new and crazy variations of Yumas. Oh, I think I got one more actually over here, not to get sidetracked. Aha, uh -huh. uh, there we go. There's a nice one, kind of like a green and orange one. I'm pretty sure someone already grabbed this. It's part of our WYSIWYG on, on our site. Is that a Yuma too? No, oh yeah, that's a Yuma. Oh, hello, I found one more. Sorry, the flow is on right now. Oh, that's a Yuma too. Ah, what do you know? We got two more in the house. Other two cool Yumas. Yeah, so let me take this one out. I'll just show you quickly how cool the color is on that. Wow, check that out. I see some green, some yellow, maybe some purple, and then you can see the different colored mouth. And if I put them next here to these, uh, this Macordia, maybe you can get a really good example. Because a lot of people ask us how to tell the difference between the two. And maybe side by side. Oh, sorry there. You can really see the difference. You see how the tentacles come out sort of in lines from the mouth? On this one on the left, this would be the Yuma. And this one on the right is the Recordia. So over time, it becomes easier to tell them apart. The color, you know, one of the biggest things. You're never going to find this sort of color on a Recordia. It just doesn't happen. This is kind of standard. You'll see one base color, a different colored mouth, and then the skirt will kind of be similar to the, the interior color, but nothing like this. This one is really incredible. Let me grab the other one too, because we don't always have Yumas. They're actually quite rare for us. So let me take this one as well. Sorry guys, corals don't really like to be touched. Neither does my younger brother. Um, okay, he's introverted. See this? That's a Yuma. Hello. Beautiful piece. And again, you can see kind of how they uh, things radiate radiate out from this um, from the mouth here. And this, hopefully, one day will get sort of to the size of those ones over there. These are about maybe an inch, inch and a bit across. I've had them for a while. I'm pretty sure both of these are sold. So if you're watching this video, more than likely already sold. They are getting shipped out. Sorry, I don't mean to tease you with these videos. Just want to show you. Oh, I can show you one more recordia while we're at it. One more example here. That's pretty standard. That's a beautiful piece, kind of green skirt. I call them more bubbly. Like I said, not scientific term, but that's what I am going with because I am not a scientist. So that is a Recordia, and they're really easy to keep. They're good for beginners, all around soft corals in general. Uh, you must. Select, I'm going to say a little bit harder to keep. Again, I'm just going to reiterate. Go with low light and feeding. And go with these ones if you want one that's actually very easy to keep. These are never going to give you trouble. Oh, I don't hear of many people watching these melt or having trouble with these at all. Again, indirect light. I'm going to stress that point. And I think that's it. That's a pretty easy coral. Uh, maybe fragging. Actually, as they grow, how would you frag it? They're going to grow right onto the rock. So we do it in-house with a bandsaw in the basement, which is quite easy. It cuts the rock like butter. It's like a wet saw. If you were going to do it at home, maybe keep it on a rock that's easy to move so that if they start to grow, because they can be tricky to remove from the rock without hurting them. If you want to get them off, you could grab a screwdriver and get in there and, and you know yank them off. But to do it without actually hurting the base or the foot of the coral would be a little bit trickier. So I would maybe grab some coral cutters or clippers and i always recommend to our customers to use these it's something i don't think you're going to find them because my friend actually makes them um unless you're here in canada he sells to a couple other stores but it's these like little frag bases i think there's a company in the states making something similar but basically the idea is you can take your coral oh sorry there buddy we're really abusing you today you can throw them in here it doesn't look super natural but then as it grows out it's going to cover this this is going to end up looking like a piece of uh, sort of like live rock and then you won't see it. I use a, lo a lot of them here in our display tank If you haven't seen this tank, what is going on? Mr. Hammer actually this guy's been closed all day and It's starting to worry me just a little bit, but those coral bases I'm talking about there's one right there underneath the leather I'm using one over here on the bird's nest I'm using yeah, I'm using them all throughout the tank this one over here on the hammer on the branching hammer coral And then it's super easy to move stuff like you can just go ahead and pluck them out So it's a like a semi-permanent. No, it's not it's not permanent at all It's just it's just holding it actually so you can see if I want to remove him I don't like this spot anymore boom easy take him out put him somewhere else So that might not be a bad idea for the Yuma I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up very very easy coral to keep Thank you for watching this episode if you like the content and you want to see more co uh, Coral spotlights like this one give us a thumb, thumbs up and yeah, we're gonna keep doing these until we run out of corals, but there's a lot of them out there. So it will take us a while. We're gonna see you back here tomorrow for another video just like this one. And we'll say good night or good morning or good afternoon, wherever you're watching from. This has been another episode of Fragbox TV.